This week on 20TV Insider, Pine Creek students volunteer to help clean up the burn scar. 20TV students earn statewide recognition for their weekly show. Air Academy's soccer team continues to roll through their opponents and make it look easy. But first, three district softball teams advance to the state tournament, including one in dramatic fashion. You're watching 20TV Insider from Academy School District 20. Hello and welcome to 20TV Insider, your weekly look into events in Academy School District 20. I'm Brian German. Thanks for joining us today. We'll start today with sports. You know, as one of the top ranked teams in the state, the Discovery Canyon softball team hosted a four team regional this weekend. It's a double elimination tournament, so two teams advance to the state tournament from each regional. The Thunder would take on Meade High School in game one at UCCS Field, and they would already be up one to nothing when Emily Robinette Goes to left field, Emily Selby and Kaylee Clark come in to score, and the Thunder take a 3 to nothing lead. And that would help them out tremendously because Mackenzie Surface was on the mound for six innings. She struck out 13, and she was also good at the plate. Here she doubles to left center, and the Thunder would go on to win that first game by a final score of 7 to 4. Now in game two, Discovery Canyon would travel back to their home field to take on Berthet. Surface again would be pitching in this one. She strikes out Maddie Herbert with the high ball. 19 strikeouts for Surface and a nice handshake with the catcher afterwards. Surface then at the plate again. Gets a two-run homer. DCC up 2-0 in the first. But it would not last very long. Berthet would come back and tie it. Jessica Boroff gets a two-run homer of her own. Suddenly it's 2-2. Two the Thunder were wondering what would happen, and everybody was, until the bottom of the 11th inning when Molly Turner was at the plate. She gets the single. Emily Selby scores. Jump around. DCC wins 3-2, and they advance to the state tournament. Now that tournament gets underway Friday at the Aurora Sports Park. Discovery Canyon is the number five seed in 4A, and they will host Windsor High School. Air Academy also advanced to the state final with two upset wins in their regional. The Cadets are the 13th seed. They'll play Wheat Ridge. Now, if both the Thunder and Cadets win, they'll face off in the quarterfinals on Friday afternoon. In the 5A tournament, Pine Creek advanced as the 13th seed, and they will play Castleview on Friday morning. Well, the Discovery Canyon volleyball team has continued to improve during the three years head coach Melissa Bravo has been leading the team. They've already eclipsed their win total from last year, and they're looking to have their first winning season since opening in 2008. And they were able to clinch that goal when they hosted Sand Creek on Thursday night on 20 TV. The Thunder stormed out to a big lead in the first, going on a long run that ended with a 25-7 win in that first set. Second game would prove to be a little tighter, but DCC still pulled away. They win the second one 25 to 18, and the Thunder got the sweep with a 25-20 win in the third set. Coach Bravo says the team's mental preparation has been the catalyst for their improvement. The potential's always been there on the court athletically. It's just, can we do it? Do we believe we can do it? And, and we're there this year, and, and we keep talking about where we want to be, what are our goals. What are the little hurdles every game? What do we want to get better at today? What do we want to get better at in practice? What do we want to get better at in this game? The Thunder now 11-6 on the season with just three games to go. One of those games will be Tuesday night versus state number one Lewis Palmer. You can watch that game live on the web starting at 6.30 by going to our website, asd20.org slash 20tvsports. The Rampart volleyball team continues to roll through the 5A Colorado Springs Metro League and remains the number one team in the state polls. The Rams haven't lost a game since mid-September as they've swept five opponents since then. And that was the case when they hosted Coronado on Thursday. As usual, the Rams were led by senior Amanda Cushion, who finished with 16 kills on the night. Rampart took games one and two by identical scores of 25 to 18. Now, game three was a little tougher for the Rams, but they closed out the sweep with a 25 to 22 win. Rampart is now 14 and two on the year. We'll be broadcasting their final two CSML games of the year Thursday against Palmer and next Tuesday at Pine Creek. Well, the Air Academy boys soccer team has had no trouble scoring goals this year. They've averaged more than five goals per game on their way to a 13 and 0 record. A big part of their high-scoring offense is senior forward Austin Dewing. He played a huge role for the Cadets last week at Lewis Palmer. The Cadets won the game 10-1, and Austin was involved in nine of those 10 goals. He scored five goals, assisted on four more. He now has 25 goals and 16 assists in 13 games, and at least two points in each game this year. The Cadets host Cheyenne Mountain Tuesday night in what will be the championship game for the 4A Pikes Peak League. 
The Classical Academy boys soccer team really enjoying its first season in 4A as a member of the Colorado Springs Metro League. They ran through the regular season with a 7-0 conference record. In their final non-conference game of the year Saturday, they hosted Palmer Ridge. Sophomore Titus Grant from the left wing, nice bomb. Hits it by the goaltender there and it's 1-0 TCA. And Grant would get another one in the second, getting by the goaltender and then short footing it in there. 2-0 Titans and then sophomore Jeremy Balds. Valdez scores here to make it 3-0 TCA. The final score, Titans close out the season with two crossover games Tuesday and Thursday. As the defending 5A state champions, the Pine Creek boys soccer team has had a target on its back all season. Despite some tough losses during the first part of the year, the Eagles have regrouped for conference play. Pine Creek was tied with Liberty Lancers heading into Wednesday's battle for the top of the 5A Culver Springs Metro League standings. And they would do just fine. Here's this Aaron Hafner coming down the wing, crossing pass, gets it into Jacob Johnson. One to nothing, Pine Creek. Liberty up for the challenge. Andrew Beers from way downtown. Bang! That makes it 1 1. Just like that, let's celebrate with Mr. Beers near midfield. But Pine Creek would come back. Nick Bannister with a nice move, gets it by the goaltender on the right. Pine Creek takes a 2 to 1 lead. Nice holster job there by Bannister, but Ryan Kenyon, he's been scoring all year for the Lancers. He comes back, hits that one to tie it up at two. Late in the game, people wondering who would win this one, but Pine Creek would come back. Watch the nice move by Bannister getting by two Lancer defenders, gets it over to Garrett Baird. That's the game winner, making it three to two. Baird's first goal of the season, and Mr. Bannister would get another one late in the game here to put it away, four to two. Pine Creek head coach Ben Corley says some of the younger guys have really stepped up to help this team improve. We really didn't play at the level we're capable of for a good stretch of the game, but then to see young guys like um, you know Garrett, it's his first goal of the season, and to get it, what a huge opportunity to get it, you know, the game-winning goal. Pine Creek later lost to Doherty to fall back into a first place tie in the Metro League. They are tied with the Spartans with one game to play in league. As most people know, the weather in Colorado can be a bit unpredictable, especially when fall rolls around. Well, on Friday night, the weather a big factor in the Pine Creek Liberty football game. Amazingly enough, both teams could see the coin toss, but the fog got worse later. Tommy Lazaro with the keeper here, 7-0 Pine Creek. He threw for 127, ran for 64, and that touchdown on the night. Josh Odom also always getting into the act. 14-0 Pine Creek, he had 158 yards and four touchdowns. And then look at this, later on the fog really there. I don't know what the light show is on the other side of the field. Jojo Doman doesn't even care about it as he nails the field goal. Kara Hama, great job. I don't know how she followed that ball in the fog. And then Odom, one more time getting into the end zone for the touchdown. Pine Creek wins this one, 47 to nothing. Well, we're wrapping up our fall live sports broadcast over the next few weeks. Our full schedule plus all of the archived games always available on our website at asd20.org slash 20tvsports. Well, Tuesday, we head to Discovery Canyon, where the Thunder volleyball team looks to knock off number one seed Lewis Palmer. That game starts at 6.30. Then on Thursday, we'll head to Rampart as they take on Palmer in a 5A Colorado Springs Metro League game. We have more just ahead on 20TV Insider. Coming up next, 20TV students head north for an in-depth day of journalism lessons. Also, see how students in District 20 are involved in saving the planet. One part excellence, one part inspiration, one part preparation, or outstanding education. Academy School District 20, where dreams take Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean.
give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. 20 TV Weekly, the student-produced news broadcast, recently received the highest honor in the state for high school broadcasting. For the fourth year in a row, 20 TV was honored with the All Colorado Award for the broadcast excellence from the Colorado High School Press Association. 20 TV is the only broadcast program to receive the All Colorado Award more than once and has earned it every year since its inception. The 20 TV class is offered to students at all five District 20 high schools and meets at the D20 Education and Administration Center. Some of the students in the 20 TV class joined more than a thousand other students in Fort Collins for the annual Journalism Day at CSU. The day-long event has speakers on topics including newspapers, yearbook, broadcasting, social media, and live streaming. Students and staff also have a chance to speak with journalism professionals about options after high school. The Colorado High School Press Association also holds annual events for students in Pueblo and Grand Junction. Well, October is National Energy Awareness Month, and District 20 is helping students get involved in saving energy. The district has posted signs throughout the community encouraging students and employees to conserve water, electricity, and gas. It's part of the district's year-round initiative to be more environmentally conscious. That includes full-time employee and energy specialist Michael Redmond. He works with schools to implement programs that get students involved in conservation. And the students will go out into DCC and audit whether or not lights are on, doors are open, and make notes and leave them for staff members just to remind them. While October is a specifically recognized month for energy awareness, the district hopes to have year-long plans implemented for all buildings. Art students at Pine Creek are helping beautify the burn scar in the Black Forest community. The National Art Honor Society chose to paint a mural of the Black Forest fire on a workshop that belongs to the Thompson family. National Art Honor Society chose this location because the Thompson's daughter, Elizabeth, is a member of NAHS and a senior at Pine Creek High School. Students have been working on the mural for the past month and will continue throughout October. Nigel Thompson says this mural will be another step in the recovery process for the Black Forest community. I thought it would be nice to have some kind of uh, record of what it used to be like and what it's like now and, and something that shows the regrowth that's going on. This project is helping fulfill the community service requirement for the Pine Creek National Arts Honor Society members. Our goal here at 20 TV Insider is to cover as many topics as possible affecting the District 20 community. If you have an idea for a story, feel free to send us an email at 20TV at ASD20.org or give us a call on our tip line at 719-234-1780. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time on 20 TV Insider. Finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Mm -hmm. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. <laughs>